I'm McKinney Smith. In 2009, while going through a divorce, I decided to jump straight into entrepreneurship. In 2012, I lost my sister and asked myself, what legacy do I want to leave behind? Since then, I've become a serial entrepreneur, helping other women publish their books, produce their podcasts, and reach their big goals to walk in their greatness. I realized the importance of sharing our stories of resilience and how it can be another's guide to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. We are blessed to be a blessing. So get ready to be blessed with an inspiring testimony. Hey, Legacy Leavers, thank you for joining us on the Walk Amongst the Littles podcast, the top 1.5% most popular show globally, where we have conversations with extraordinary women that are letting us step into their shoes. I help women to own their voices to create impact, prosperity, and legacy. I get inspired when I see another woman succeeding, but I'm more interested in her backstory and her mindset on how she got there. So today's guest is about to bless us with her testimony. And since you're already here, you may as well subscribe. Today, we have Tammy Price, aka Tammy with the T. She is an inspirational speaker, entrepreneur, millionaire coach, mentor, and author. Please welcome to the show, Tammy Price. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> hey. Thank you for having me. Thank you once again, uh, Tammy, for agreeing to come on and share your story with us. I've been following you for a couple of years now on Instagram. We have a mutual friend, uh, Natalie, and I just, I love the hustle that you guys have. I love the way that you inspire others through your journey and through your story. So I'm just grateful to have this opportunity to have this conversation with you. I'm grateful. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. And I thank you for having me. Congratulations on the number one podcast in the world. That's a big deal. Thank you. Thank you. You're coming from someone who is like extremely shy and introverted, you know, putting your voice out there can be a challenge. So when I learned that, you know, the show was in that top 1.5%, I was like, okay, I'm doing something. This is, you know, my ministry. So thank you, God. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So before we jump into your story about where you are presently, just as an icebreaker question, you know, I, I love to get um, just a glimpse into who you were when you were a little girl. And typically I like to ask, you know, what you wanted to be when you're a little girl. But I think I would love to know, like, what type of teenager were you? Wow. Well, <laughs> thank you for that question. I was the teenager that tried to fit in. I tried to fit in, you know, my other, um, my cousins and my friends in my hometown, um, they were playing sports. So I wanted to play sports. You know, I was always looking for some type of model because my mom died when I was nine years old oh, wow. and I never knew my dad. I never seen his face. So my whole young teenage years, I was really trying to identify who I was and my aunt Cisa May. Um, which is still here with us today, she raised me. So we grew up in a little country town called Vernon, Texas. I haven't always been a city girl, city <laughs> girl, real life. I haven't always been a city girl, but um, I grew up in a country town called Vernon, Texas. And we had about 12,000 people all together. Everybody played sports. Everybody knew everybody on the same street. You had to be home before the street lights came on. And when you leave out the house, you were outside all day. You had to drink out of water holes. You had to come up with your own games. And so, you know, I was always the comedian of the group. I have always been like a nurturer. Um, I always hung with people. You know, I made sure everybody was protected and everybody was covered. I always gave to people, even as a young child. But I was always spoiled. And I used to always wonder why I was different, um, why I was special. Before my mom died, she used to call me special. Why I was special, why I was the different one. It was like I was the black sheep and everybody else was white in real life. Everybody else had parents and everybody else had people that could drop them off at school. Everybody else had, you know, their eighth grade date and eighth grade, you know, and I didn't have any of that. I didn't grow up normal um, like the normal people. So um, I grew up very kind of trying to figure life out. I get that. And, uh, you know, my condolences about losing your mom. And I can see how, you know, losing a parent at such a young age can shape you know, especially your adolescent years, much less, you know, who you are as an adult. So 
back then, like, what were your aspirations? Like, who did you want to be or what did you want to be when you grew up? I actually looked up to my big sister. I looked up to the older ladies. I always looked up to the older ladies that were in, like, in my circle, in my community. And I used to love Beyonce. I still love Beyonce to this day. I used to look up to Beyonce. I used to look up to my sister, all the pretty girls with the good hair. You know, (laughs) I, I used to look up to all of them. But You know, I also looked up to Juanita Bynum Um, when I was growing up. Juanita Bynum was very popular in the church. And I used to look up to Juanita Bynum and all of those people. But I I never had just like one particular person. It's always just been like if I seen somebody further than me that paved the way, it was just like inspiring. But Mm -hmm. I, I was just so busy trying to figure out who I was. So I really couldn't focus on who nobody else was. I hear that. I hear that. Okay, so since I've been following your journey, um, and you share this, you know, openly all the time about going from homeless to being where you are now. So for those of, of you know, for the listeners that are listening now in other countries and have no idea who you are, like, give us the synopsis of how you got to where you are today. Like, tell us your story, where it began to where you are now. To be honest with you, I, like I said, I didn't have a mom. I didn't have a dad uh, my whole life. So I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have a family. So I met my children's father at a very young age when my daughter was one. She's 17 now. And um, I started a family very, very young. I wanted to, you know, create this thing that I had going on in my mind. But before that, I'll just tell you real quick that um, when I got pregnant in my hometown, I got pregnant in Vernon, Texas. And my brother made me move to Dallas, Texas. He made me move to Dallas, Texas. He said, if you stay in Vernon, Texas, you will not become all who God created you to become. Not knocking the city or people that come from there, but usually people that come out of the hood and come out and change your environment, come out of the place, um, usually become something. So I moved to Dallas, Texas in 2004 when I was 16 years old and I was pregnant with my daughter. And then um, after I had her, I met my children's father in college. In college, after high school, I met my children's father. And I just connected. Um, I used to listen to my pastor, Ricky G. Rush, on uh, every day on the way to school. And, you know, I just was like trying to find my way in Dallas. And then I started hanging out with these group of people at the school. And we called ourselves the A1 click. And A1 mean the first and the first, the first letter and the first number. So <laughs> nobody was better than us and all of that. But I was always so different. We used to fight. And I would be like, y'all, come on, man. I got something to live for. I got a daughter at home. I can't be the one out here fighting. Like I knew something was going to shift in my life. So I went on and got married. I got married at the age of 21 years old. Um, That was that was crazy. I wouldn't recommend nobody get married at 21 (laughs) today. But, you know, I had to go through my process. So I got married at the age of 21. I had my second son. I mean, my second child, Trey. um, And we were just just living, you know. Fast forward, I got in church. My children's father was like, let's start going to church. Like, you listen to Ricky G. Rush every single day. Like, let's go to church. Let's go to church. Let's do something with our life besides what we've been doing. Like, club every day is not going to work. So we got in church. And then I just started kind of like saying, you know what? I got purpose. You know, one one of them sermons hit me one day. I'm like, I got, I got something to do. You know, I know why I'm different now. Like, I know. And I would tell myself when I was a young 21, 22, 23, like your story will will reach millions of people because it's not a normal story. You're not a normal person. Most people that grew up like me um, probably already committed suicide or on drugs. They sell broke, uh, broke in, um, never is able to get over what they could not control. And so I use my young teenage, not my young adult life saying, okay, now I got kids. Now I got the family. I'm going to be something that I don't even know that I never was able to experience. Mm -hmm. And so I got in church and fast forward to 2000, 2014. I was like, I'm going to go on a spree and look for my dad, sis. I was like, I'm going to go look for my dad because I don't know who I am. At this point, I got two kids and I'm married at the time. And I'm like, I need to look for my dad because I don't know who I am. My mom died when I was nine. I need to look for him. I was like the Mari story. I was like the Mari story. Like, he is not the father. <laughs> so I started every job that I worked at. I worked at Walmart. I worked at a call center. 
um, every job I worked at, I started literally using their system to Google um, my dad. And I knew his name when I got married. That's what happened. When I got married, um, it came up when you change your name, it gives you the correct spelling of your mother and father's name. And his name was Dwayne Jordan. So fast forward, I ended up Googling him and I found him, finally found him. As soon as I was about to give up, though, because uh, I had been looking for him for years, um, I said, you know what? I'm gonna look for him one more time. And I don't know who's listening to me, but you got to do that thing one more time. That thing that you keep rejecting you and you keep saying, no, nah, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to face it. You got to do it one more time. You got to rebuild it one more time. And so I looked for him one more time and I found, um, I, I found him and I reached out and we ended up having our first father's day, June of 2015, actually seven years ago. Oh. It's complete today. Thank you. Wow. I had my first Father's Day, my first and last Father's Day. My dad died 90 days in September. At the end of September, he died um, right after we had our first Father's Day. Uh, he passed away and I was mad at God. And I was like, why is this happening? I've been in church. I started a family. I'm not in fornication. I'm doing everything right. I got my kids. I prayed to you. Why? Like my dad, like I already don't have no mom. I finally found my dad. And, and he reminded me, he said, baby, you're so blessed. You're so favored that I blessed you with him because he was going to pass away regardless. Um, but I saved him for you because of what you desired. And he was able to tell me everything about myself, everything about my mom. So I didn't have any more identity crisis. I didn't have any more voids. And right after he died, it was the lowest moment of my life. I went through a divorce. So I went through a divorce. We lost the house. I lost my dad. Uh, everything I prayed for, everything I built in church, everything I was praising for and worshiping God for, I lost it. And um, that was the hardest part of my life. And I just talked to my pastor about this the other day. We went to church October 2015 and T.D. Jakes was there to celebrate the 25th anniversary. I'll never forget. And he said, do it. I remember he said, do it. And I went to the job the next day. And my children's father called me and said, it's a lady on Instagram and um, um, not Instagram, um, Instagram. And um, it was another podcast thing we used to use. I don't know if you know about it, but it was another whatever. And her name is Stormy Wellington. And you need to reach out. You need to reach out. We got the spiritual thing together, but now we got to get the money together. Now you need to start operating and knowing who you really are and moving into your business side of yourself because you're not just born to pay bills and die. So we're going through a divorce and my children's father called me at the job and, and told me to Google Coach Stormy Wellington. And I reached out to her and I studied her on YouTube for a long time. And I said, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach out to her because she's speaking on stages. I need to be speaking on stages. There's always a model. There's always a model that shows you the way beforehand. Even if you're a visionary, I'm my own visionary. There's always somebody that paved the way. Mm -hmm. And I Googled her, YouTubed her. End up reaching out to her on Instagram and she said, call me on my direct line. She didn't know me from Adam. She didn't know me from Eve. She didn't know that I was depressed. She didn't know I was homeless. She just said, hey, call me. And I and um, I called her and I told her, hey, listen, I don't really have anything, but I want to know what that white bottle is that you have. Um, you're in network marketing. I work a job. I don't know. You have three kids. You went through a divorce. I have three kids. I'm going through a divorce. We got something similar. And uh, I started my Total Life Changes business. I started network marketing in October 2015, right after my dad died. And I started transforming my body and ultimately transforming my bank account. And I wasn't the one that got stuff just, just, whew, just stuff happened for me real fast. It, it, it was like a whole journey. It was a whole journey for me. Like I showed up to every event TLC was having. I still was going to church. I showed up. I started transforming. The products really worked for me. I'm like, let me go out here and stand on the side of the curb and sell the products to pay my bills and to try to re re pull myself about the bootstraps. Like I was really broke. I, I didn't like after I got a divorce, everything was dependent on my my children's father's money. And I think that's when I got my awakening because it was like. God was like, he's not your provider. I am your provider. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what these memes are that's going on around social media that everybody, you got to have some type of man that got it going on that they can buy you this and buy you that. I hey, listen, I'm about what I want myself. You know, anything you give me is just extra. Yeah. So the long story short, that's kind of how all this started is that I lost everything. 
And then co Total Life Changes and Coach Stormy Wellington came into my life. And that gave me something else to hold on to and be grateful for, knowing that my life was not dying right along with my dad. And uh, I held on to it. And I, that's why I don't quit. That's why I like everybody else quit. Everybody else don't honor. Everybody else take their coach for granted. Nobody else wants to work. Nobody doing income producing activities. And you see Tammy, that Tammy's never going anywhere. Why? Because my why is bigger than the how it happened. Why I do what I do. It, it's a different type of feeling when you wake up in the morning. It's because you woke up this morning. Now uh, life is more meaningful. And four years later, I just kept working and kept working and kept working. Uh, I used to go through this little self-sabotage and feeling like I wasn't good enough and feeling like, oh, I can't sit with them and all that. And I said, man, listen, I belong here. They ain't no better than me. And four years later, we made $1.2 million um, from homeless. We didn't have nowhere to stay. I, I literally worked my business to feed my kids every mm -hmm. single day. Like, I don't know what people doing right now for work because I got up every day and I had to sell the tea to eat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my why is a little bit different than the average person. Um, four, four years later, we did $1.2 million. And then the next year, we did another $1.5 million. So we're about $2.9 million right now in uh, network marketing from nothing, from losing everything, working a job, normal little girl, um, going through everything. And this is where we are right now. I know it's kind of like a long little process, but it, we really went from rags to riches and God has blessed me with an amazing team, amazing individuals along the way. He sent me my team. He sent me my leaders. He sent me people who's like, oh my God, that's Tammy too. Oh my God. You know, and that's just where we are right now. So I am one of the top earners in network marketing. I'm the, one of the most powerful women in network marketing now. And all I did was use my story to empower other people. I have goosebumps right now, Tammy. Like when I get goosebumps, that's the spirit hitting me. Um, I'm always inspired by hearing another woman's story. But as you were talking, like I'm fighting back tears, I'm getting goosebumps. Like, and it's, it's one thing to say that your story is inspiring. It's one thing to say that your story is, I have, I have no words right now. Yeah, <laughs> like you are so resilient. You are so resilient. Like a common theme on this show from most of the women that I speak to, their pain birthed their purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we look at people and we look at the lives and the lives that they have now. And some people may admire that person's life and say that that's like unattainable for them or they can't get there. And they make all the excuses in the book why it's not for them, not knowing you have a story where you took your pain and you transmuted that pain into purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have been through so many things. And even as I'm listening to your story, it actually makes me think of Will Smith's story because I read his book. And it's like people who are out here showing up every day, consistently being persistent, getting back up every time they are knocked down, functioning through their trauma. And still making a difference in this world, still making an impact, still, um, you know, just just helping serve and live with a huge purpose. Yes. Like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. For, like, I almost feel like I'm like, do I even have any questions? <laughs> like, <laughs> OK, I, I, I've got lots of questions, but I mean, you shared so much. And I think within what you just shared. I hope that the people who are listening are not only listening with an open heart, but also taking notes because it's one thing to grow up. You know, I'm going to say even as a child growing up in poverty, I grew up in government housing too. So I get what you're saying when you talked about, you know, most people that you were connected to are either no longer with us or struggling or what have you. So to come out of that is one thing because mm -hmm. our environment does affect who we are. Um, so being able to remove yourself from that environment and to rewrite the ending of your story is one thing. Another thing to have your mother pass when you were a young child. I don't, I don't have the greatest relationship with my mother, but I don't know what I would do if I didn't grow up having a mother around. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> it's so, it's so important. And I'm sure that that even impacts how you mother your children. Correct. And then to grow up not knowing who your father is, 
and to get the opportunity to me. And that's where, that's where my tears, I'm just like holding back the tears when you said that part, like getting to meet your father, getting to fill that void, that identity crisis, you know, some people don't even get that opportunity, but you were given that opportunity. And then to have to accept when that opportunity is taken away, you have been through so much stuff. I I can't even sit here and, and list them all like off the top of my head, but I, I wanted to touch on, I guess, how do you feel faith has played a role in who you are today? Um, I mean, faith is my life. Um, I, I have to get up every day. That that, that gives me emotional because um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, um, you know, we walk by faith. We don't walk by what we can see. And sometimes all we can see is everything is not working. Everything is, the, 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 all you can see is the bank account. All you can see is the messed up relationship. All you can see is the abuse. All you can see is the rejection. All you can see is what you don't have. And and you got to wake up every morning and believe that, no, 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 no. What I can see is not really what it is. And that's how I draw what's not until what it is. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. All I see in my bank account right now is a hundred thousand dollars. That is not it. No, 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 no. I see a million dollars a month. I, 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 all I see is that abusive relationship that I was in, but no, 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 no. I see real, true, genuine happiness. I see marriage. Like I see what I really can't see. That is faith. Yes. That is faith. and. My faith, I, I literally understand the, the, the power of PSA. Is, and we'll get into that in a minute, but you got to pray. You got to pray. Pray without ceasing. You got to sacrifice something. There's always a ram in the bush and you got to take action because without faith, I mean, without works, that's like you can't, faith without works is really dead in real life. So I get up every day and I give God glory. I have a whole relationship with him. I have like this special kind of connection. Like when I speak something, it really happens. Or if, if I lay hands on you, it'll really happen. And it's my gift that he gave me. So mm-hmm. I have no choice but to believe him. And I don't get stuck in what I can see. A lot of people judge people of what they're wearing and what they can see on the outside. But if you really know there's something else going on with this woman that's interviewing me and she's going through a healing process and she don't understand that it's a bigger, 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 bigger platform for her, but she just can't see it right now. She can only see Tim with the T, but faith cometh by hearing. So yeah. if I can put this in your ear right now, you'll start believing for greater. If you just look in your back office and you only sold two Nutribursts for the day, or you only sold two teas for the day, you you just the director in your eyes. You're like, man, how am I going to get to the top of this company? Man, I'm just the director. I only got $200 in my back office. How am I going to make that $20,000? Well, if you begin to see the $20,000, if you begin to see that you got leaders, if you begin to see yourself as an executive ambassador, then though, and put in the work by faith, it'll come. Amen. Amen. It'll come. Again, see, that goosebumps. Um, <laughs> okay. So I truly believe there are different levels of faith. And I think that a lot of people will say that they have faith, but they allow the fear, the doubt, the worry, the negative self-talk, their past trauma, their childhood, all those things to overpower and cause, you know, this, basically this virus in their head to overtake their ability to have the faith that they need to manifest what they want. And I truly believe that faith and fear are both beliefs in the unknown. We just have the ability to choose. And some people will say, well, you know, I'm in this situation. This is what my situation is. This is what I can see. And they choose fear because they've allowed that to overpower their ability to have faith. Now, as people, we think in pictures. So if you are able to visualize what you want, if you are able to visualize what you would love, if you are able to block out all of those negative thoughts and fears and doubts, then you can actually manifest and your faith will carry you to that place where you want to truly be. So Mm -hmm. I, you know, the the reason I even asked that question about faith for you is because I, I hear it in the way that you speak, in your tone, in 
everything that you just explained. Like sometimes, like I said, people will say that they have faith, but it's like, it's not matching up with, <laughs> you know, their, their actions and their, you know, mm-hmm. their, their thought process. So I love that. Um, you know, you talked about the, the PSA, PSA. So, okay, first I'll let you explain what that is. And then I'll go into what I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. PSA is a inspirational movement. It's really a ministry, um, but it's just none. It's like none other. It's um, a vision of mine um, that I woke up with June 1st, 2019. I woke up and I heard P&A and I was like, that sounds a little bit like PSA. I heard it just like we're talking right now, P&A. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what do I need to do in June of 2019? He said, if you do these three things, you're going to see an entrepreneur shift. And a lot of people don't understand that um, success is very spiritual. If your money is low, um, if you're not where you want to be in the success world yet, it's because your spiritual is not adding up to the physical. And uh, he said, you're going to have to, if you want to go to the next level, what you've always done is not going to take you where you want to go. You're going to have to pray, be honest with me, have, have, have humility, you're going to have to sacrifice some things. If I sacrifice my life, said Jesus, at least you can sacrifice a donut. How are you going to say you want to lose weight, but you keep eating the burger every day? You got to sacrifice something. Um, even I sacrifice my son. At least you could sacrifice some sex tonight. At least. Um, and, and take action. Um, you know, take action in your business. Don't just think you just about to become an ambassador. No, baby. You got to call those five people and say, hey, listen. I have an opportunity here for you. Hey, let's start off with your testimony. Hey, let's get you a transformation going. You really got to do podcasts. You really got to go to the event. You really got to do income producing activity besides hoping something falls out of the sky. And so he said, if you do those things for 30 days, and what I did was I got up, I went to the rooftop of the apartment that I couldn't afford back in 2019. And I said, listen, y'all, for 30 days, we're going to get up. At six o'clock in the morning, that's sacrificing time. And we're going to pray. And I'm going to give a, a, I'm going to look up a scripture. We're going to give a word. And that day we're going to write down everything we're going to do for the day, whether that's cleaning up our house, cleaning up our closet, calling five friends or calling five strangers, you know, going to business meetings, you know, working out. And we just literally took action for those 30 days. And in those six months, you know, I, I was at I, I went from making about five hundred a week to about twenty thousand dollars a month um, in those six months um, because of the thing that I did spiritually um, PSA. And now PSA is is very known. Um, we do a conference June because that's the anniversary. That's what we just did. And then we do a annual conference in December because he told me it's like six months, like he moves in six months. The work that you're doing now, you'll see it in six months. In network marketing world, the work that you do now, you'll see it in 90 days. But in the spiritual world, the things you're praying for now, by December, you'll see them. And Mm so um, that's what PSA is all about. So I bring in different speakers, people that have changed my life throughout the the years like marvin sap changed my life you know uh joshua rogers i used to look at him on bet sunday best he changed my life now he's in the in the in the uh, whole psa movement and so we have these different conferences and the only thing that i can kind of compare it to is woman that are loose um and um this is just really it it seems like I'm, i'm gonna say this but it seems like PSA has PSA has always been inside of me. I just didn't have the name for it. It's mm-hmm. like being pregnant with something, but you haven't named the baby yet. Yeah. So I've always, every time I got discouraged or every time I felt like I needed to change something, I always went on some type of fast. So, you know, we would get on live and I would invite everybody on Instagram and I'd say, hey, just drink nothing but water today and let's pray. And let's just then we'll name the fast and then God will move. And people will be like, oh, my God, I got a $17,000 check in the mail. I'm like, what, girl, send me some gas money. <laughs> you know, all that because they really believed. And so PSA is just, it's different. But anybody, wow. I will say this and I'm going to give it back to you. But no matter if you're saved, no matter if you believe in God and all of that, um, everybody has, like, even I believe even the people like Jay-Z and Beyonce and even Donald Trump and even all the people, even whether you're saved or unsaved, believe or not, somebody has said a prayer. 
something. Somebody has sacrificed something or somebody, good or bad. And those people that are very successful has taken action. Mm -hmm. And that is the key to all blessings. If you have the gift inside of you and you don't put it in the play, you don't pray about it, you don't sacrifice your time for it, you don't get the knowledge for it, you don't show up for it, you don't build a relationship for it, and you don't put it into action, you'll never have it. But if you do those th three things, I can promise you, you'll have it. I think those three things together are the perfect formula because I think oftentimes people will either pray for a thing or ask for a thing or want something, but then they immediately want the end result. They don't realize that there are things they need to do in between to sacrifice. Sometimes they either want to, like, I don't know whether it be to mimic someone else or ask someone else to give it for them to them or, you know, whatever, but they're not willing to make the sacrifice for themselves. And then that action piece, like, you know, it's, it's very, very common where, you know, people will reach out to me and they want the end answer. They don't realize like <laughs> there's been a process. There are things that need to be done, whether it be, you know, the consistency, like you, you mentioned having to get up, um, you know, at six o'clock in the morning or having to fast. Like what are some of the, the habits that you had to change or even implement <laughs> um, for your sacrifice? Yes, I had to. Well, first of all, I had to sacrifice sleep and, and I had to become the leader that I so wanted everybody else to be in my life. You know, my pastor taught me a leader, a real leader takes risk. They takes risk, they take risk, they go first, and they help. They don't reach out for a hand up. Mm -hmm. They usually are doing the helping. Mm -hmm. Real leaders. And if you want to get to the next le level, I realized I had to become what I wanted everybody else to be in my life. I'm the lender. I'm not the borrower. A part of the time, I was always borrowing. I always was the one that didn't have it. Oh, I ain't. As soon as I pay this rent, I'm worrying about the rent next month, you know. Um, but it came a point in time where I had to be like, you know what? I got to take the risk. Um, I got to wake up earlier. I actually got to do the exercises. Like, I have to write the book, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have to cut off these negative relationships I have to stay, get out of my comfort zone. I have to sell tea to get to the TLC event. I have to put myself where I see myself at. Like, so just, and, 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 and then I, I sacrifice a lot of sleep. I sacrifice a lot of different foods. Um, for an example, like one of my friends passed away on Labor Day after he left my house. We had a, a barbecue at my old house in September. And as soon as he left my house, he passed away. And I haven't had chicken since. Um, wow. So this is a Labor Day will be a year with no chicken to me and the physical people are looking at it like, wow, you're doing all that for your friend. And in the spiritual, I'm saying, no, no, that was a big sacrifice because I need to learn why that happened. I need to know what was birthed from that. I need mm -hmm. to sacrifice. So I haven't had chicken in a year almost. Mm -hmm. So wow. I sacrifice a lot of foods and, you know, I sacrifice my flesh like I don't I don't do a lot. You know, I don't do certain things and I'm very disciplined. I'm very consistent, you know, and um, I honor. I honor who came before me. Um, I have character, you know, um, I trust what I can't trace. You know, even if I can't trace it, I don't know how it's going to happen. I still trust that it's working out for me. And um, I sacrifice a lot of uh, time. I sacrifice a lot of time because I can't I can get money back, but I can't get time back. And so those are a few things, you know, um, I don't drink soda. I don't drink a lot of juice. Um, when I do, it's I really don't have a taste for it because I've drunk so much water, you know. So I just li literally would pick something and just say, hey, we do this all the time. Let's just get rid of it for mm -hmm. this week. Let's just get rid of it for this month. Like, why not? It'd be fun, you know. And that's, that, that's kind of it. I have fun with my sacrifices. Well, my condolences um, about losing your friend. I know that, you know, losing anybody um, that you love can't be easy. Um, I know that as people evolve and as you start to um, elevate in your life, especially when you're in servant leadership. So, I, you know, my mentor taught me all about servant leadership, but you will always have people that try to push the boundaries and take more than they give. So I would love to know, like, what kind of boundaries have you had to put in place? 
Um, I only go so far. Um, that that is a really good question. The boundaries. I know when a business partner is a business partner. I know when a friend is a friend. I know when family is family. That's my cousin. That's not my friend. You know, that's my cousin. That's not my business partner. That's my brother. That's not my that he he might not ever buy the tea. That's my brother. He ain't for that. You know, um, my boundaries is I. You know, I would just say I. It depends on what circumstance or situation it is. But in every situation or relationship, I have certain boundaries. It's just only certain. I'm only going to go so far with you. Like mm-hmm. I, I know, I know when you're just a business partner. You know, yeah. I know when you when you really my friend. When you, I know when you really doubt me, when you really don't trust me. I have discernment. I, I know when it's time for me to give you my time, invite you into my house, bring you into my world. I know when it's time to do those things, and then I know when you're not ready for it yet. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm a woman of faith. So hanging around a lot of people that don't believe is very difficult for me. So people think, man, Tammy holds back from me. She holds back from me. She have up this wall. It's because you don't believe. And my spirit won't let me connect with a Mm non-believer. And so I have boundaries. I I still have to love this person. I still have to help this person. But I can't let that person in there. And then I had to be able to identify, well, Tam, make sure you're not building up a wall because um, of what you don't have, you know, you got to allow, allow people in. You got to open those doors sometime and allow people in because everything I lost, everything I lost, it's just like I'm used to people like, bye, you know, I'm used to people like leaving. I'm used to people dying. I'm used to people. And then I'm also now I'm growing and learning and healing. I'm starting to learn that everybody's everybody is not against me. Everybody's not going to leave me. Everybody's not going to harm me. Everybody's not going to uh, talk about me behind my back, you know, and the people that do, they're supposed to, because they can't come. And I had to realize that my boundaries were very important. I have boundaries in my relationship. Like you, I let them know upfront because of what I went through in the past. Like you cannot do this. Like you can't, you, you cannot do this. Like you can't, uh, you you're not gonna stay out all night. Period. Not saying that that he does, but I'm saying, like, I, if if I had trust issues from my past, and I'm with you now, just know that I'm in my process of healing, understanding that I give everybody a fair shot. You're not who I who I used to be with. So now I got to give this person a fair shot, but I have boundaries. Like, okay, if you was at your restaurant, then let me see that you was at your restaurant. Let me see, like. Up to increase my trust in you, please, because yeah. I'm only going to go off what you show me. Mm-hmm. And so I have mm-hmm. boundaries. And even in my relationship, I like to communicate mm-hmm. a lot. I like to communicate. I'm like, I, I'm like, <laughs> so at nine o'clock, I can't, but I communicate, <laughs> I communicate a lot. Like they tell me what's on your mind, express to me what's on your mind, because I, I didn't have a mom or a dad. So it's either you are either going to be the person that use that to not express yourself and to shut down, or you're going to use that to express everything. So one of my love languages is at, like, I like to hear how, how amazing I am and how amazing yeah. I am to you. Like, yeah. don't just expect me to be this amazing person because you, you can go over there and be with somebody that will use you and take and draw from everything that you have. And so um, I'm a big communicator. I express myself good or bad. This I don't like the way this is making me feel. And then I'll say, baby, you do a good job today. And same as my business partners. Like I'll be like, uh, you ain't hit your goal. You need to redo. You need to hit your goal this, this week. You didn't hit G5. You need to hit G5 this week. And the people that do hit G5, I'm like, yes. I have a girl on my team named Victoria from the UK. She's a regional director. She's making more money than nationals and globals. Um, but she is putting herself, um, her team to make sure she not only G5, she makes sure her team get G5. So I personally invited her to sit in my $4,000 VIP section next month. So like I, that's my boundaries is I communicate. I express myself. I let, let people know what hurts me, what, what tick me off, you know, and those type of things. But I have boundaries. I have boundaries with my money. I have boundaries with my money. Like me, I don't like my money sitting up for like six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. Like I'm a hustler. So I have to learn how to like transition 
And and Papa's helping me with that, like kind of transition, like, Tam, you got 50000 sitting in the account. Like, do something with it. I'm like, no, wait, no, <laughs> because I ain't going to get that 50000 back until February. And I got bills. I can invest in TLC and make the money back tomorrow. So it's just a, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I do have boundaries with my money. Like I, if I spend 10000 a day, I won't spend no more. You know, so it's it's a lot, but that's that's a really good question. But success doesn't just it's not a happenstance. It's a process of growing and it's becoming the the person that you have to become in order to um, get get the success that you want. Yeah, I agree. And you spoke earlier to like honoring the people that have helped you. And you mentioned Coach Stormy. So I guess how would you say that the coaching and mentorship um affected you? Because I feel like, and I'm going to say maybe a couple years ago, pre-pandemic, you know, I used to see a lot of blogs and, you know, hear a lot of people talk on different platforms and they were, I'm going to say, disrespecting the power of mentorship and coaching. And I feel like those are people that have never had mentorship and coaching. So I strongly believe in those two things in being able to elevate and have people show you the way so you don't have to deal with all the pitfalls and you can skip some steps sometimes. So I would love to know I guess the the power of coaching and mentorship in in your life. Yeah, um, the p- power of coaching and mentorship is very important. I I can't. I don't know where I would be without my coach um, or my mentor because, like I said, they paved the way. They showed me. They showed me who I could become. They also showed me that where I was was not it. This is not it. Like they 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 actually like. Okay, I've been where you are right now. Like you don't see yourself past two thousand dollars a week. That is the problem. You got to start mentally, physically, spiritually seeing yourself at twenty thousand a week, two hundred thousand a week. You got to see yourself where you want to be. If you keep seeing two thousand, that's where you're going to stay. And so my mentorship came in and say, hey, uh, coaching came in and say, hey, not not nice, not my friend, not um, none of that. Tammy, hey straighten up, look better, watch your eyelashes, watch your nails. Like somebody got to do it. You know, somebody got to be the leader that says, I care so much. Mentorship is and, and coaching is not easy, but I honor because it's like, I care so much about you. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you, what you need to hear. Right. You know, I'm not like you like put, put on some longer shorts or um, make sure you call your 10 people, bro. Somebody that holds you accountable. Like if you just getting up every day, you're not coachable. You don't listen. You don't want to change. You want to stay the same. You think you created everything on your own. You're not humble. It's not going to work. Coaches and mentors really cut off years and decades of things. Like it makes it like, Tammy, you're right on target. You're, you're, you're right on target. Like this is normal. This is a normal emotion that you feel like this right before marriage. This is a normal emotion. You feel like you're going to lose everything right before you gain everything. It's an emo- It's a normal emotion. It's a normal fear to feel that way, but you don't have to stay that way. So mm-hmm. it, they, they correct me. They challenge me. And ultimately I do the changing. And, um, you know, I, I remember... Back in uh, May of 2019, before I launched PSA, Coach Stormy, I was only making like three, four hundred dollars a week. And Coach Stormy called me and Natalie to Atlanta and said, hey, I don't know where you're going to get the money from. But me and me in Atlanta this week and we were broke, broke, both broke, didn't have no coins. But she was our coach. So she seen something that I didn't see. And she was she was like, if I don't grab Tammy right now. If I don't call Tammy right now, if I don't call Natalie right now, they're not going to become all that I see them becoming because Mm -hmm. they don't know yet. So let me get let me get around them. Let me pray with them. Let me let's go on tour. Let me pour life into them. Let me see what's really going on mentally um, and and psychologically. Okay, like what's going on so that we can go to another level. Coaches and mentors are, are very crucial, even pastors somebody that's a little bit more wise than you mm-hmm. and then you never know how God is going to bless you to go back and bless the people that put you in position. Amen. I agree um, with everything so you just said. I, I always, people say, you know, 
it's almost like a big sister or it's 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 like if you've never made a million dollars, how are you going to talk to somebody that's still working a job? Like you got to have some type of coach, some type of mentor that has made a million dollars before. Yeah. Because if not, you're going to go talk to the men- the supervisor. That's going to be your mentor. And you're just going to look at how I can become the supervisor. How you're going to go from $9 an hour to $15 an hour. But if you make a $9 an hour and you start talking to somebody that <laughs> make $900,000 a year, then you're going to be like, oh, wait, I don't have to be. I don't have to be here. But the mentorship says you don't have to be here, baby. Yeah. But who do you have to become and what do you have to go through and fight through and press your way through to get to $900,000? If not, you're going to be at $9. <laughs> Try to become a supervisor. <laughs> I love it. I love it. (laughs) Okay. So before we go to the final segment of the show, I want you to tell people where they can stay connected with you to learn more from you and about you. Yes. um, All platforms. You can Google Tammy with a T, but uh, Instagram is Tammy Price underscore Tammy Price underscore Um, TikTok. We have about 10.9 million over there on TikTok. Tammy Price Um, prayer sacrifice action on Instagram. Uh, Tammy Price on Facebook, Tammy Price on YouTube, Tammy Price everywhere until the last name and to the last name change. You can Google Tammy Price. <laughs> I'll have all your details um, where they can get connected with you in the details section of the episode. So they won't have to search too far. They can just click and connect. Um, and for the final segment of the show, I call it a walk in her wisdom. It's like a rapid fire. Sometimes not so rapid if I ask you to unpack. I don't like rules, but um, (laughs) we'll try to keep the answers, whether one word or one sentence. Okay. Okay. So let's start with name one of the most worthwhile investments that you've ever made. And that could be of money, time, energy. Myself. Love it. Name a book that has changed or greatly impacted your life. Think and Grow Rich. It's been the book that changed my life. Napoleon Hill. Yep. What failure has taught you the most about life? And do you have a favorite failure? Going broke. That means I'm not going to stay broke. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it woke something up in me. I can go on there all day. Okay. <laughs> um, when was the last time you cried? Uh, yesterday. Uh, what's been the biggest surprise that you've had in the last few months? Biggest surprise I had in the last few months. Uh, I'll just say, um, my boyfriend blessing me with um, a PSA clothing line. Love it. Love it. Love it. What impact do you want to have in the world? Tammy with the T will reach millions of people um, with her story from the crack house to the white house. Everybody will know Tammy with the T and lives will be changed. When I open up my mouth, people's lives will be changed when I speak. Last but not least, what do you wish women would do more of? I wish women would really know their power. And not try to get the, I wish women would really understand the power that they have inside of them rather than needing validation from a man, a job, a money, family member. No, everything that I need is in me. Everything that I need is in me and it's in me right now. Amen. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tammy. Like, look, see goosebumps again. Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy, for not only sharing your story with us, but all of the amazing gems and wisdom that you have left with us today. I know that the women that are listening are going to be extremely blessed. I know I was. Um, So just thank you for transparently sharing your journey and inspiring others to walk in their greatness. Wow. Thank you so much for having me. Um, You know, I want to say this in just closing we did about 7 million views. Um, we did about 7 million views on all platforms last week after PSA conference. And I know I say I'll reach millions and millions of people. It's happening on social media. And I just want to say to anybody that is really like trying to figure this thing out, figure life out, feel like they don't have the support, feeling like they're alone, feeling like they don't have enough money, um, feeling like like your whole world is a recession right now. Everything is going downhill. If you would just pray, believe in the prayer, sacrifice something and take action. I promise you, like there is nothing that is too big, nothing that is too small that you cannot overcome. You know, from a little child 
it didn't don't I don't I, I'm not normal. I don't have parents. I don't have none of that. Um, to becoming who I am today, even just mentally, everything is not about money. Success mm-hmm. is not e- equivalent to money. Mm-hmm. Success is who you can become and who you can help. Who am I mentally? Because if I lose everything that I've built, I can build it again because I built it already. Yeah. So I would just challenge each and every one of you to believe in what you cannot see and pray every day, sacrifice and take action. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Listen, you just ministering to me today. Like these goosebumps are just. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so, so much. And to all of the legacy leavers out there, until next time on all platforms, rate the show, leave us a review. We want to hear, you know, how what Tammy said touched you. We want to hear how, you know, you resonated with her story. Feel free to screenshot this week's episode and you can tag Tammy at Tammy Price underscore. You can tag myself at the real McKinney Smith. And I challenge you to send this episode to at least five women so that you can bless them. And until next time, continue to walk in greatness in your stilettos in a manner worthy of your calling.